Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Neil Gavin. I'm a registered nurse and I do have a degree in medical surgical nursing. I create my nursing educational videos to help nursing students and nursing professionals like you with their studies. If that is something that you are interested in, consider subscribing. If you're already a subscriber though, thank you so much for your love and support. I see you. I upload my videos Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. So if you're interested in that, please make sure that you subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell so that you will be the very first to watch my newest uploads. Also, don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up and share with your friends because that will really help know that you like to see more content like this don't forget to follow me on all my other social media accounts everything is at neil gave except for my tiktok account which is neil gave official also follow me on my facebook page it's neil gave and without further ado let's jump into the video how are you guys doing hi isang panibagong nursing discussion nga ang alay ko sa inyo for today this friday ay isang uh, video lecture ang alay ko sa inyo cheat sheet yes to your a complete normal laboratory values like you see on the title of this video um this is uh this video lecture is all about coagulation studies normal lab values um uh that you normally encounter in the area and now this is very important uh now before I further proceed you guys i would just like to um, welcome all the new subscribers that we have on the channel. You guys, we've been really, really growing so fast. And I'm just so happy that you guys are sharing. Every time po na sinishare nyo yung mga video lectures na ginagawa ko, nakakataba po ng puso. Parang nare-remind ako na, ay, may nakikinig pala sa akin. Ay, may natututunan pala sila. Yung ganon. So, please do do that and continue supporting my channel and spreading the news about my channel. Sharing it so you're also uh, social media platforms help me out because um, I believe the main intention I truly genuinely believe that the main intention of this video and this channel is to help you guys all the Filipino nurses to with your studies not just Filipino nurses because you know we're dealing with um, uh, the, the major mode of uh, language yeah the major language that we're using on this channel is basically English. So all of the nursing students in all race, color, um, uh, size, so is inclusive tayo dito. So wag tayong ano, wag tayong ganyan. We promote inclusi uh, inclusivity. Ngayon, kung hindi mo pa napapanood yung last week's, um, last week's, recently lang, actually, a couple of days ago, I actually uploaded, um, a video that is um uh that talks about not talks about yeah that deals with um possible nursing board exam questions pnle1 na maaari mo ma-encounter ngayong darating na board exam panoorin mo yon kasi ilalagay ko yung video uh, na yon kasama ng ibang mga playlist sa nursing test banking o di ba multi ano multi uh, napaka flexible na ating channel we you can actually see all of the concerns that you may encounter in the nursing world in this uh, on this channel so yeah gusto ko lang ulit magpasalamat from the bottom of my heart to all the new subscribers at sa mga datihan na na talaga namang mga oldies dyan na patuloy na nagme-message at nagpaparating ng suporta sa akin maraming 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 salamat po for all of you guys hindi ko man kayo ma-reply ang lahat um but I want you to know na I see you and I appreciate you from the bottom of my heart. Ito na, medyo mahaba itong discussion na to ha. Kasi tatalakayin natin yung buong coagulation studies. Ano-ano ba yung mga laboratory values and laboratory tests na we get when we talk about your coagulation um, uh, studies. Kapag nag-order ang doktor mo ng coagulation studies, mag ka ng coagulation studies, ano-ano yung mga laboratories na i-expect mo. Now, knowing the different normal lab values is an important step in making an informed clinical decision as a nurse. Diagnostic and laboratory tests are tools that provide invaluable insights and information about the patient. Lab tests are used to help confirm a diagnosis, monitor an illness, and the patient's response to treatment. Physicians order coagulation studies such as platelet count, activated partial thromboplastin time, prothrombin time, international normalized ratio, yung ating INR, 
bleeding time, and D-dimer to evaluate the clotting function of an individual. Um, in this section, you guys will discuss the indications and nursing implications of each lab test. Oh, diba? Exciting. Ayun lang. So, eto na tayo. Let's proceed. Alright, let me share to you our objectives for today's discussion. Well, on this video, we're gonna discuss all the coagulation studies that you might encounter in the area. All of these, eto po sila. We have platelets, PT, mean platelet, volume. Ano daw? Mean platelet volume, yung ating MPV, fibrinogen. Bleeding time, normal lab values, D-dimer test, protombin time, international normalized ratio, yung ating PTINR, activated partial thromboplastin time, APTT. I really took my time to do my research and gather all the coagulation studies that we have in the clinical setting para maging cheat sheet mo. Napakarami ko na nga pong video regarding sa cheat sheet, mga pinadaling... Um, Paraan, kaparaanan, para ma-memorize mo at maalala mo yung mga napakaraming concept natin sa nursing. Don't worry, you don't have to be TMI or overwhelmed with this information. That's why I created this video for you to uh, have a source para balik-balikan mo siya every time na you forgot about something. Okay? So let's proceed. Let's start with platelets, PT. Mean platelet volume, yung ating MPV, and fibrinogen. Now, platelets are produced in the bone marrow and play a role in homeostasis, um, yung balance. Platelets function is homeostatic, plug formation, clot retraction, and coagulation factor activation. Now, normal and critical values for platelet count and mean platelet volume. Ito na yung mga normal values natin, ha? Wag malilito kasi we're still talking about platelet count and mean platelet volume, MPV. Ito na. So, ito yung mga range natin. Range SI unit and range conventional unit. So, sa adult, we have 150 to 400 times 10 to the power of 9 over liter. Ano pa ibig sabihin nito? So, was a 150 billion uh, of platelets per liter of blood. So, meron tayong 150 liters billion of blood uh, per liter. So, yun ang ibig sabihin niya. Sa range conventional naman, 150 to 400, uh, 150,000 to 400,000 uh, cubic millimeter. In child, sa range natin sa SI unit, 150 to 400,000 I, I'm sorry, 150 to 400. So range or conventional, 150,000 to 400,000 uh, cubic millimeter. Okay, sa child, iba-iba po, ah, depende sa age group natin. Dito sa side na to, yung iyong age group. Dito yung range, yung SI unit and conventional unit. So, sa infant, you have 200 to 475. Sa um, range conventional, um, itong mga unit na to, wag malilito ha. This is just one way of writing them down and how you normally see them in the lab results. So, merong iba, mga hospitals na they use as a unit, meron namang conventional. Alright? So, mabalik tayo. Sa infant, meron sa conventional unit, you have 200,000 to 475,000 cubic millimeter. Premature infant, you have 100 to 300 and then sa range naman or conventional unit natin, you have 100,000 to 300,000 cubic millimeter. Newborn, you have 150 to 300. This is the range. And then 150,000 to 300,000 cubic millimeter. Critical value mo nurses, mind, mind you guys, take note of this. Less than 20 or more than 1,000 um, 1, sa ating SI unit or sa range, if you're going to convert it to conventional, it's less than 20,000 or more than 1 million cubic millimeter. So sa mean platelet volume natin, yung ating MPV, you have 7.4 to 10.4 fluid ounce. Sa ating range naman, our conventional unit, 7.4 to 10.4 cubic millimeter. Sa conventional uniting, you use cubic millimeter. Um, dito naman sa ating, uh, what's this, uh, SI unit, you normally use these values uh, to the power of 9, 10 to the power of 9 per liter, meaning billions. 
that. And sometimes you use fluid ounce dito sa ating MPV. Malino ba yon? Nako, kung ako sa yo, you make a screenshot of this and balik-balikan mo siya every now and then. Proceed na tayo. Ano ba yung mga normal and critical values for fibrinogen? Kanina tinalakay natin yung uh, MPV, mean um, proton bean volume, and then yung ating um, platelet. Okay? Ngayon naman, tatalakay natin yung fibrinogen. Huwag malilito ha, eto siya. So, sa adult, meron tayong 200. Ang normal range is 200 to 400 uh, milligrams per deciliter. Sa newborn, 125 to 300 milligrams per deciliter. Critical value mo nurses ha. Mind you guys, this is very important. Less than 100 milligrams per deciliter is considered critical value. sa ating fibrinogen. Ngayon, bakit ba natin kailangan malaman itong mga values na to? Eto siya, tatalakay natin. Kapag tumaas ang iyong uh, platelet count, ano ang ibig sabihin nito? What is the indication sa atin o sa pasyente natin? Alright? So, you can expect na kapag mataas ang value ng iyong platelet count, eto siya, you will have or your patient is probably experiencing iron deficiency anemia. or malignant disorder, cancer, uh, polycythemia vera, or your patient is probably post-splenectomy syndrome, spleen, removal of spleen, or rheumatoid arthritis. These are the indication or these are the reasons kung bakit maaring tumaas o kung bakit mataas ang platelet count ng pasyente mo. Now, Um, ito yung mga i rule out ng doktor. Nagigets nyo? Yes, ayun siya. So ano naman yung mga indication kapag mababa ang platelet count mo? Decrease platelet count o yung tinatawag nating thrombocytopenia may indicate the following. Marami po ito. Una, cancer pa rin. Pangalawa, chemotherapy. Disseminated intravascular coagulation, DIC. And then, hemolytic anemia, hemorrhage, hypersplenism, immune thrombocytopenia, infection, inherited thrombocytopenia disorders such as Bernard Solier, Wiscott Aldrich, and Sieve syndromes, leukemia and other myelofibrosis disorders. Pernicious anemia. Alam nyo ba yung pernicious anemia? Refresh tayo. Pernicious anemia is the deficiency of your um, um, deficiency of B, vitamin B. So, when the vitamin B is not being absorbed in the stomach due to lack of intrinsic factor, you end up having pernicious anemia. Um, systemic lupus erythematosus, erythematosus, I'm sorry, that is uh, lupus, SLE. That's a type of autoimmune disorder. Next, thrombo, uh, thrombotic uh, thrombocytopenia. So these are the reasons why your patient is probably having or the reasons why your patient is having decreased platelet count. Ah, kaya pala natin inaaral yung MPV. Ah, kaya pala natin inaaral yung fibrinogen. Ah, kaya pala natin kailangan malaman kung bakit mababa. Ano yung reason kung bakit mababa yung platelet count ng pasyente ko? These are the diseases, the disorders that the doctors uh, will try to rule out. Okay? So, eto na tayo. Proceed na tayo. Ano-ano yung mga nursing considerations mo for platelet count? Makinig. Eto na. High altitudes, persistent cold temperature, and uh, strenuous exercise increase platelet counts. Tandaan. Yung mga nag exercise ng rigorously. High attitudes, nakatira sa Baguio. Persistent cold temperature, Baguio pa din. Banawe. These are, may put your patient in a, in a, in a position where they have what? High um, uh, platelet counts. Next, assess the venipuncture site for bleeding in clients with known thrombocytopenia. Kapag mababa yung platelet count ng pasyente mo, may risk for bleeding. Hence, you need to assess the venipuncture site. Kung saan mo siya ina-inject. Kasi that could put the patient and risk for bleeding. Mababa ang platelet count niya, magdudugo yan. Next, bleeding pre uh, precautions should be instituted in clients with low platelet count. Right? 
Right. Proceed na tayo. Bleeding time uh, normal lab values. Kanina tinalakay natin yung MPV, platelet count, and yung fibrinogen. Ngayon naman, bleeding time normal values. Bleeding time. Bleeding time assess the overall homeostatic uh, function or platelet response to injury and vasoconstrictive ability. Pagconstrict ng blood vessels. Alright? Ito na. So, normal values for bleeding time. Ano-ano ba yung mga i-anticipate mo kapag sinabing bleeding time? Ano-ano yung mga lab values na uh, may encounter mo? Ito siya. Uh, meron tayong dalawang method on how are you going to achieve or how are you going to um, uh, what's this? Uh, uh, get bleeding time. Meron kang Duke method and IV method. Sa Duke method, ang normal bleeding time mo, meaning pagklat ng dugo, is 1 to 3 minutes. Okay? Sa IV method, meron tayong 1 to 9 minutes. This is the range of your normal bleeding time. Malino ba yun? Malino. Duke and IV method. Sa Duke, medyo mababa ang range. 1 to 3 uh, one, two, three. One to three minutes. Sa IV method, you have one to nine minutes. Alright? So, ito na. Ano-ano ba yung indication of bleeding time? Like I said, this is very useful in detecting disorders of platelet function. Now, prolonged bleeding time or increased levels may indicate. Ito yung siya ha, makinig. Una, bone marrow failure. Bakit? Saan ba ginagawa yung platelet? Yung mga blood components natin, di ba sa bone marrow? Yes. So, bone marrow platelet. Kapag mataas yung bleeding time, prolonged bleeding time, meaning mas mahaba doon sa uh, uh, Duke method or sa IV method man yan na ginamit mo. Sa Duke, 1 to 3 minutes. Sa IV method, you have your 1 to 9 minutes. Kapag mas mataas sa 9, ang bleeding time mo, yung, your patient may probably have bone marrow failure. Ano pa? Bernard Soulier syndrome, capillary fragility, clotting factor deficiency, collagen vascular disease, con uh, connective tissue disorder, Cushing syndrome, disseminated intravascular coagulation, Glanzmann's thrombos uh, thrombasthenia, Hennach uh, Sean Lane syndrome. Hereditary telangia ectasia, hyperasplenism, uh, leukemia, primary or metastatic tumor infiltration of bone marrow, severe liver disease, thrombocytopenia, uremia, and lastly, your von Willebrand's disease. So these are the possible causes or indication why you have a prolonged bleeding time or increased levels uh, of your uh, bleeding time, all right? So yes, take a screenshot because this is all for you. Now let's proceed to nursing responsibility. Ano-ano ba yung mga nursing considerations mo uh, for bleeding time? Una, assess the... Uh, Assess and validate that the client has not been receiving anticoagulants, aspirins, or aspirin-containing products for three days prior to the tests. Okay? Baka naman kasi may false positive result. Baka naman nag aspirin maintenance sa pasyente mo. O nagtitake ng mga anticoagulants na kagaya ng uh, enoxaparin, mga ganun, or heparin. So, kailangan mo yung assess and evaluate. Next, inform the client that punctures are made to measure the time it takes for bleeding to stop. Next, apply pressure dressing to client with bleeding tendencies after the procedure. Now, these are the nursing considerations for bleeding time. Proceed na tayo. Tayo? Okay, we just long tayo dun. D-dimer test. One of the uh, coagulation studies that we have. Now, D-dimer is a blood test that measures clot formation and lysis that results from the degradation of fibrin. Alright, D-dimer. Ito, sa so slide na to, tatalakay natin yung normal lab values of D-dimer and indication of D-dimer test. So, let's start. So, normal lab value ng D-dimer mo is... 
Uh, so, ang normal value ng D-dimer mo is below 0.4 or less than 0.4 metric unit of mass concentration per ml. Again, that's below 0.4 metric unit of mass concentration per ml. Alright, ano-ano yung indication mo? So, um, helps to diagnose the presence of thrombus blood clot in conditions such as deep vein thrombosis, pulmonary embolism, or stroke. Ah, kaya pala ang doktor nagpapa D-dimer test. Ah, uh, what's this? Ah, uh, uh, order. Kapag nirurule out nila yung DVT, PE, tsaka stroke, kasama yan. Uh, used to diagnose disseminated intravascular coagulation yung ating DIC. Clotting disorder yan. Monitor the effectiveness of treatment. Okay? So, once again, these is uh, these are the things that you need to remember when you talk about your D-dimer. Next, you have your prothrombin time, international normalized ratio, yung ating PT-INR. Now, prothrombin is a vitamin K dependent glycoprotein produced by the liver that is essential for fibrin clot formation. Each laboratory establishes a normal or control value based on the method used to perform the PT test. The PT measures the amount of time it takes in seconds for clot formation. The international normalized ratio, yung ating INR, is calculated from a PT result to monitor the effectiveness of warfarin. Alright? So, eto na. So, sa next slide, tatalakay natin. Expect nyo na about PTINR ito. So, tatalakay natin dito yung normal and critical lab values for protrombin time, PT, and normal and critical lab values for international normalized ratio, yung ating INR, and of course, yung indication for both PT and INR. Alright, so let's begin. Normal and critical lab values for protrombin time, PT. So, by seconds ang unit natin dito, ha? So, ang normal natin is 11 to 13 seconds. That's the normal range. For full anticoagulant therapy, sa pasyente ay nagre-receive ng anticoagulation therapy, full. Fully, ha? So, ang normal range nila is below or greater than 1.5 to 2 times control value. Again, that's greater than 1.5 to 2 times control value. Critical value natin ng iyong PT, you guys, is more than 20 seconds. Alright? That's very critical. Next, normal and critical lab value for international normalized ratio, yung ating INR. Tandaan ito. Normal natin is 0 0.8 to 1.2 seconds. Again, 0 0.8 to 1 to 2, ah, 1.2 seconds. Therapeutic INR range for patients on warfarin. Pag ang pasyente nagre-receive or nagtetake ng warfarin, ano ang normal INR niya? 2 to 3 seconds. 2.0 to 3.0 seconds. Therapeutic INR range for patients with mechanical heart valves. Sa may mga nagmemeka, sa mga pasyenteng may mechanical heart valves, ano ang normal range nila? This is one of the considerations that you need as a nurse para ma-differentiate mo at ma-relay mo ng maayos sa doktor. Um, that's why assessment is very important. Paano mo malalaman na nagwa-warfarin ang pasyente mo kung hindi mo sinample? Sample uh, taking strategies, you know? Um, assessment sample. Yung parang sample is like a, an acronym po yun on how are you gonna take your nursing assessment. Um, so, ito na. Um, sa mga may, may, uh, may mechanical heart valves, 3.0 to 4.0 seconds ang normal range. Critical value nurses, more than 5 seconds. Alright? Malino yon, malino ha. Now, indication for PT, unahin lang natin, monitor response to warfarin, sodium, comadine therapy. Alright? Because, tandaan mo to, ito sa mga value natin, meron tayong special, um, what's this? Uh, special side or section where we, 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 um, measure, uh, we 
take consideration those patients who are on comadin therapy. Kagaya nito, anticoagulant therapy, um, more than 1.5 to 2 times sa ating PT. Sa mga nag, uh, what's this, nagwa-warfa rin naman sa ating INR, International Normalized Ratio. Ano ang normal range nila sa pagdating sa INR? 2.0 to 3.0 seconds. All right, so you want to measure within that range. If the IN, PT INR of the patient is within that range, meaning effective ang yung comadin therapy. Next, screen for dysfunction of the intrinsic clotting system resulting from vitamin K deficiency, disseminated intravascular coagulation, or li uh, liver disease. Na bisaya pa ako dun day. Pero once again, these are the things that you need to consider and you need to be mindful whenever you are looking at the PTINR result of your patient. Okay? Let's proceed. So, what is the indication? Lagi tayong mayroong indication. Ano yung mga posibleng nangyayari sa katawan ng pasyente mo? Ano yung mga posibleng diseases and disorders na pwedeng i-rule out ng doktor sa pasyente mo? Una na dyan, ano-ano ba yung mga reasons why you have increased PTINR? Una, bile duct obstruction. Next, uh, comarine ingestion. Comarine, this is a type of this seed. If your patient is having ingestion of that or have uh, like an ample amount of on her or his diet, you can expect increased PTINR. Now, uh, disseminated intravascular coagulation, hepatitis, hereditary factor deficiency, liver cirrhosis, massive blood transfusion, and salicylate uh, intoxication, yung aspirin. Next is vitamin K deficiency. Malino ba yun? Malino tayo sa mga indication ng iyong PTINR? Eto na. So what are the indication? What does it tell you when you have a decreased PTINR? Okay, kanina increased. Ngayon naman decreased PTINR. Ano-ano kaya yung mga pwedeng i-rule out? ng doktor mo. Now, blood clots quickly due to the following supplements containing vitamin K. Ah, nagkaklat. Kasi vitamin K is very essential for clotting formation, right? So, kapag decrease ang iyong po, uh, decrease ang protrombin time ng pasyente mo, tanong mo, nagtitake ka ba ng vitamin K supplements? Because that could actually be the reason why. Next, high intake of foods that contain vitamin K such as liver, broccoli, kale, turnip greens, and soybeans. These are the food groups that are high in vitamin K. Once again, these are the reasons or the decreased protein bean time indication. Vitamin K supplements and food rich in vitamin K. Such as the following. Magproceed na tayo. Ano ang nursing consideration mo, nursing care mo for protrombin time? Tandaan, lumalabas ito sa board exam. Not exactly as the words, but mostly scenario. Ito na siya. Now, if a patient is prescribed, uh, the baseline specimen should be drawn before anticoagulation therapy is started. Note the time of collection on the laboratory form. All right? Siyempre, bago ka mag-take ng warfarin or the patient, pasyente mo mag-start ng warfarin therapy, comadin therapy, may baseline dapat yan. All right? To save as the comparison kung effective ba or lumalala o kailangan mag-increase ng dose, mag-decrease ng dose. All right? Next, provide direct pressure to the venipuncture site for 3 to 5 minutes because of risk of bleeding. Okay? Next, you have your concurrent warfarin therapy with heparin therapy can lengthen the PT for up to 5 hours after dosing. Diets high in green leafy vegetables can increase the absorption of vitamin K, which shortens the PT. Orally administered anticoagulation therapy usually maintains the PT or uh, protrombin time at 1 to 5 to 2 times the laboratory control value. Lastly, you have your initiate bleeding precautions if the PT value is longer than 30 seconds in a client receiving a warfarin therapy. 
Malino ba sa inyo yon? Huwag malilito ha. Ito tayo. Ito ay PTINR. Okay? International Normalized Ratio and yung Protrombin Time. Iniisa-isa natin yung mga coagulation studies. Yun po yun. Okay? Alright. Next, you have your activated partial thromboplastin time. APTT. Activated partial thromboplastin time, APTT, evaluates the function of the contract activation pathway and coagulation sequence by measuring the amount of time it requires for a recalcified citrated plasma to clot after partial thromboplastin time is added to it. The test screens for deficiencies and inhibitors of all factors except factors. Ano, ano yung mga factors na to? 7 and 8. Naalala ko sa board exam namin, tinanong to. Very uh, bookish type of question. Yung direct forward, tinanong to. Ano-ano yung mga factors na yon? 7 and 8. Oh, I'm sorry. 7, I'm sorry. Let me correct myself. 7 and 13. Alright? 7 and 13. Again, that's 7 and 13. Alright. So, sa slide na to, tatalakay natin yung APTT, Normal and Critical Lab Values for Activated Partial Thromboplastin Time, APTT, and Partial Thromboplastin Time, PTT. And also, the indication for APTT. Na, oh, ito na tayo. Ang normal value ng APTT mo, Activated thrombo, uh, thromboplastin time, a uh, partial thromboplastin time is 30 to 40 seconds. Seconds per unit. Sa partial thromboplastin time naman, normal lab value mo is 60 to 70 seconds. Okay? Patients receiving anticoagulant therapy, ito na naman, ang normal sa kanila, normal APTT nila is 1 to 5 to 2.5 times control value that is 60 to 80 seconds. Sa PT naman na mga pasyenteng um, receiving anticoagulant therapy, 1.5 to 2.5 seconds times control value or 120 to 140 seconds. Critical value mo nurses makinig sa APTT activated partial thromboplastin time, none, or more than 70 seconds. Critical value ng PTT mo, partial thromboplastin time, is none, or more than 100 seconds. Alright? Ito na tayo sa indication, monitors the effectiveness of heparin therapy. Sa mga pasyenteng nag-heparin therapy, Laging merong PTT check regularly. Next, detect coagulation disorders and clotting factors such as hemophilia A. Factors 8, ito yung sinasabi ko kanina. And um, uh, hemophilia B, factors 9. Sa hemophilia A, ano-ano yung clotting factors na affected? Factor 8. Hemophilia B. Ano yung clotting factors na affected? 9. Factor 9. Okay? Next, determine the individuals who may be prone to bleeding during invasive procedures. Naalala ko, um, oh, ginagawa to sa area kapag um, may mga invasive procedures such as ultrasound guided, um, kapag um, major surgeries, laging may um, nag-order ang doktor ng coagulation studies. Normally, APTT, PTINR, and PTT ang in-order nila. Pre-op. Mga pre-op labs ito. Okay. So, kapag increase ang APTT levels mo ng pasyente mo, base doon sa mga lab values na tinalakay natin kanina, ano ang ibig sabihin nun? Ano-ano yung mga pwedeng i-rule out ng doktor? Na poseb... Poseble? <laughs> na posibleng <laughs> nararanasan o dahilan ng pagtaas ng APTT level ng pasyente mo. Ito siya. Congenital clotting factor deficiencies. Disseminated intravascular coagulation DIC. Hemophilia. Either A or B. Heparin administration. Hypofibrinogenemia von Willebrand's disease. Leukemia. Liver cirrhosis, 
vitamin K deficiency. Pag decrease ang APTT levels, this may indicate the following early stages of disseminated intravascular coagulation or extensive cancer, the big C. All right? Now, ano naman ang nursing responsibility or consideration mo for APTT? Activated partial thrombopistin time. Ito siya. Do not draw samples from one arm into which heparin is infusing. This is very crucial, you guys. You do not understand. If you if there's ongoing heparin infusion, in the hospital setting, if there's any ongoing um, heparin infusion site, Ah, infusion. Heparin infusion. Ongoing ito ha. Normally, every 6 hours or 8 hours. Depende sa order ng doktor. But normally, every 6 hours, nagdodraw tayo ng APTT sa pasyente natin. Blood samples. Isisend yan sa labs. Of course. You, do, you don't get to draw kapag ang line ng pasyente mo is peripheral at nasa left ito. For example, doon nakakonek ang iyong heparin infusion. You don't get to draw the heparin samples or the blood samples, I'm sorry, to the left arm because that is where your heparin infusion is. You will draw it on the opposite arm. Why? What is rationale? To prevent false positive result. Of course, dun sa left arm, concentrated yung medication dun. Kasi doon nakaline ang yung heparin. Tama? Normally, nag order pa yung doktor na before instructing or collecting blood, you wait, you stop the infusion and wait for like an hour or 30 minutes. Then you collect the blood samples. This is just to make sure that we prevent false positive uh, results. Alright? Next. If the client is receiving intermittent heparin by intermittent injection, plan to draw the blood samples one hour before the next dose of heparin. Apply direct pressure to the venipuncture site. Next, blood specimen should be transported to the laboratory immediately. The APTT should be between 1.5 and 2.5 times normal when the client is receiving heparin therapy. Monitor for signs of bleeding. If the APTT value is longer than 90 seconds in a patient receiving heparin therapy. Diyan na nga natatapos ang ating discussion for today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned something. Please like, share, and subscribe to my channel for more nursing educational videos. Let me know if you have other nursing topics that you want us to do. Comment it down below. Abangan nyo nga po yung mga next video natin regarding laboratory um, normal values. Napakarami po. Uh, alam ko gumawa na rin ako ng cheat sheet nito ng laboratory lab values. So, kung hindi mo pa napapanood yon panoorin mo siya kasama ng mga contents ko sa nursing. Napagod ako magsalita pero it's all worth it. I hope na may natutunan kayo. Pakilagay yung mga mga komento nyo sa baba sa comment section dyan. And please, like, share, and subscribe to my channel for more nursing educational videos. I would like to announce kung nakaabot ka sa kaduluduluhan nito. Ha? Gusto ko lang i-announce na... By early next year or late this year, I'll be launching my podcast um, account. So I hope I see you guys there. It's all about mental health. It's all about empowerment, um, motivation, and true expression and authenticity. So yeah. I'm so excited. Tulungan nyo na nga ako, ipamalitan nyo na sa Radyong Sira ang pinakabago, pinakaperresh at ang pinakalibring nursing review center sa balat ng YouTube. Don't forget to follow me on all my social media accounts. Everything is at Neil Gave except for my TikTok account which is Neil Gave Official. And follow me on my Facebook page. It's Neil Gave. I'll see you again next week. You have a good one.